third one. Could this anomaly mean, Dr. Kaku? This is huge. This is really huge. You know, for 50 years, think about it. For 50 years, we've had this clumsy theory, ugly theory called the standard model of particles. But it works. You can't, you can't go against it. You know, after World War II, we started to split apart the proton. And we thought things would get simpler, simpler the deeper you go. Uh-uh. <laughs> we found hundreds of subatomic particles. And J. Robert Oppenheimer, the father of the atomic bomb, he once said, and I quote, the Nobel Prize in physics should go to the physicist who does not discover a new particle this year. Because we were drowning, right. drowning in subatomic particles. Now we have a little bit of order, the standard model, but it is ugly as sin. 36 quarks and antiquarks, <laughs> 20 free parameters that are adjustable, three identical copies or generations of particles, I like to think of it as taking an aardvark, a platypus, and a whale, <laughs> scotch taping it together with scotch tape and declaring it, aha, this is nature's finest evolutionary achievement, the grandest pinnacle of evolutionary theory. <laughs> well, <Right. laughs> the standard model is a theory only a mother can love, but that's why for 50 years we've been looking for a deviation, right. a slight crack, because that would signal a higher theory a higher theory, maybe string theory. But that's what we've been looking for, and we never found it until two weeks ago. After 50 years of wandering in the wilderness, we finally found a crack, and that could signal new physics, mm. perhaps string theory. And that's why a lot of us are very excited by this. Right, and for anyone that, that's interested, uh, you know, the the G factor is supposed to be uh, approximately two in the, in the muon, uh, but we have a result of 2.00115965218164.3 is the number that's being uh, tossed around. So, so to the layman, that might seem like, well, what's the big deal? But it's an anomaly, and and even even small anomalies could mean could like you s said, Doctor Kaku. Maybe there's a extra gauge boson out there that we haven't identified yet, or maybe there's you know something else that's being interacted with. It's quite exciting. It's very exciting, realizing the fact that the magnetic property of the muon should be identical to that of the electron. The electron has a partner, the muon, and they should have identical properties according to the standard model. But looking at the magnetic properties of the muon, we find that it's different, much more different than it should be, and we're scratching our heads. Right. In other words, there's got to be a new particle out there. And we think that we cannot prove there could be a new symmetry out there governing these new particles called supersymmetry. And supersymmetry is the symmetry of the string. So it's too early to say for sure, but there's a lot of excitement. The drum rolls are beating now. Now people are wondering, could this be it? Could this be a clue that there is a fantastic new theory out there? That's what's driving all the excitement. Right. And the muon is quite massive. Does that have any... any uh, is that any indication of why it might have stumbled upon this uh, probabilistic interaction? Well, the muon is identical to the electron, identical, except it weighs more and it decays differently. Mm -hmm. Other than that, they are twins. But this new result shows that they're not twins at all. This new result shows that the magnetic property, the G minus two, of the muon differs from that of the electron, and that's not the way it's supposed to be. Right. Standard model has survived all challenges for 50 years until two weeks ago. And that's why people are scratching their heads and saying, aha, there's a Nobel Prize out there waiting for the people who can figure this out. Now, I have a word of advice. If any of your listeners ever figure this out, what should they do? I give them advice. First, tell me first. <laughs>